everyone, it's Chelsea from Paper Rock to Your Studio. And today I'm sharing with you days 14, 15, and 16 of the Artist Trading Card A Day in June Challenge. That's hashtag ATCAD2018. If you're participating, you can use that hashtag on any social media. And that's how you will be found when people search. So for day 14, I decided to do my pick a stick challenge ATC. Every month we have an art journal page challenge and an artist trading card challenge with randomly picked one word prompts and color prompts. And so I started out on a 140 pound watercolor paper cut two and a half by three and a half inches. And then I um, added some newsprint tissue paper to the background and I also went around the edges with some black ink and then I started the first step which was pour that could be anything pouring anything on there I decided to use deco art fluid media paints and the colors are green gold and yellow oxide and I poured them onto the top of the card and then used a spray bottle with water to encourage them to kind of drip down and blend the, on the card and then I gave that a really good dry and now I have kind of an interesting background. Now with the pick a stick challenge you need to use the steps and you need to use them in order but you are free to add anything that you want in between in front of or in back of. You could use something that already has paint on it. You could make a background. You can um, you know put put anything in between the steps. So that's the challenge. So um, before I moved on to step two, I wanted to put a focal image on there. These are some uh, flower images from Stampin' Up, probably discontinued, that um, have been stamped in archival black ink onto just plain old tissue paper, like the kind of stuff that comes in a package that the shirt is wrapped around, just cheapy tissue paper. Sometimes this is a fun way to do collage because you can place your images exactly where you want. If if you're trying to stamp with a rubber stamp, which imp most of my stamps are mounted on wood blocks, it's kind of hard to see where you're going to get your image. You can't line it up perfectly. Of course, with the invention of the misty and the clear blocks and the clear, you know, everything like that, it's not so difficult anymore. But if you have uh, stamps that are mounted on wood blocks you can just stamp them onto tissue paper and then you can uh, collage them on and the tissue paper basically just disappears you can't see it so I use Liquitex fluid uh, matte medium to do that and then the next step is glaze now to glaze means to build up many many layers of color and depth by adding um, translucent layers and I'm using glazing medium from Golden. And I added first <clears throat> the, it, it, it basically thins the paint down to a translucent, if, if, even if it's not to start out with. And it, the glazing medium prevents you from getting um, like peeling and flaking, like what is what would happen if you used water to thin it down. So my first layer was the yellow oxide. Then I, I um, dried that, put a glaze of the green gold. Then I dried that, then put a glaze of the quinacridone gold. And that just gives a really warm layered look to your background. It's a fun thing to do. I, I think I have probably a video that does a pretty good job of explaining it. And I'll try to link that if I remember. Um, it was it was a canvas, but the idea of glazing and adding layers and layers and layers is what the old masters used to do. So it's it's a cool technique, and maybe on an ATC doesn't really show up that much, but on a larger piece you could really see the difference. So the third step was paint, and then I also needed to use the color, which was wisteria. So I got out some different acrylic paints and a acrylic handled brush with a really fine round tip and painted in my flowers and stems to give them a little bit more presence on the composition. And then of course, since I was using acrylic paint and painting 
over lines, then I had to kind of bring my scribbling lines back in. So I used a black fine tip Posca pen, which writes beautifully over acrylic. Um, love these pins. <laughs> what can I say? So just kind of added back in those scribbling lines. This also gives you kind of the opportunity to make that image yours instead of it being a stamped image. You know, you can kind of change the lines a little bit and make it a little bit more your personality or whatever. So that was um, day 14 and the Pick a Stick Challenge ATC for June. I did add a little saying from the Tim Holtz chat stickers and also some of those the wisteria colored splatters from the leftover paint on my palette, which I just watered down with and then splattered it on with the brush. So there you go. So the next one, of course, is day 15 and I wanted to play with some alcohol inks. Just felt like an alcohol ink day. <laughs> so I, I think what prompted it is I saw this, this foil tape. It's something that you buy at a hardware store it has something to do, I think, with with sealing ductwork or something. But it's a it's an aluminum with a with a um, adhesive back, and it's fun to play with to make like a textured something to add to something. You can run this through one of those texture plate things that you put through your die cutting machine that squishes it and it makes an interesting texture. But I decided I want to pressure emboss it using a ball stylus. And I got out a paper piercing mat, which is just basically like you could use a, a um, uh, what are those things called? Mouse pad. You know, it's just, it's like a, a squishy bit. You want to have something squishy so that when you press down the, the surface underneath the metal that you're trying to emboss or deboss is going to um, give. So I'm using a stencil from Strumpet Stencils on Etsy, Sarah Trump's shop, and it has a symbol on it. Um, I ended up doing that one and then I did one where I did it from the back. So the one on the right is puffed up and the one on the left is pushed down, but I don't show all of it because I needed to trim this uh, video down to 20 minutes. So I, I didn't end up using that other piece, so I didn't show it. So then I have some alcohol inks. I also have some alcohol ink sprays that I made by putting 91% alcohol in a spray bottle and adding alcohol ink to it, which gives you a spray option. So I'm kind of using those together, um, dripping on some inks, spraying on some inks, um, spraying clear alcohol to get it to run and move. And um, this is just really fun. It's a fun thing. And I will put all the colors that I used in the description box below so that you can find them if you want to use them. So then I had this leftover deli paper that was what was underneath the little projects when I was putting alcohol on them. Once it's dry, it makes fantastic collage paper. This, you know, puddled up leftover alcohol ink on a deli paper is just really cool. It's translucent and it's, I don't know, it's interesting. It's like, you, I mean, I, I haven't ever actually intentionally made that. Like maybe I should intentionally make it for collage fodder or whatever, but it's I always just have it from the leftovers because I, I tend to put deli paper on my desk to catch drips and splatters and things. Um, I do have a nonstick mat underneath my whole desk, but uh, I just tend to put the deli paper over the top because then I get all these interesting pieces that I can make and there's not waste. So... I collaged with a Liquitex fluid matte medium that deli paper onto my watercolor ATC and then I trimmed down my piece a little bit and put memento black ink around it just like I did around the card and peeled it off stuck it onto the card so now I have my alcohol ink piece over some alcohol ink background because it's alcohol ink day today <laughs> and then I still didn't feel like the, the dark around the edges was dark enough. Like I put the ink on there, but I just, I don't know, it was getting all over my fingers. It was coming off. So I decided to use my Stabilo all black pencil around the edges just um, to give even more of a frame. 
blend that out with my water tank brush. This is the Arteza brand one, which I'm, I have a set of those, which I'm really in love with because of the, the pinchy thing in the middle, which allows the water to be controlled. It's like a button. And so happy with that, happier than any of the other ones. Then I decided to add black and white splatters. So I just put a little bit of titanium white and a little bit of ivory black on my palette, watered them down with a wet brush and then splattered those over my project. Just, I, sometimes you just need splatters. I, I can't explain it. You just, you need the splatters. <laughs> so that's what I did. And then of course I had to dry that. So dried that up real good. And then um, from my different play that I was doing, uh, I had taken that other piece and put it on a piece of black cardstock and then I had trimmed around it and I had these little skinny trimmed off pieces. So I decided to use those as an accent because you don't want to waste stuff. I could have just tossed them, but they seemed kind of cool, thin little bits. Decided to use them as an accent. Um, I got out my iCraft mixed media glue because it has a really fine tip that I can apply glue with and it's a strong glue once it's on there. So I use that to stick on my little um, scrappy, tiny little trim bits onto there. And then I put uh, my word from one of the Tim Holtz chat things. It's the one that has just words. Um, put that on there over the top of my little tiny scrappy things and that is day 15's ATC of ATC a day 2018. So day 16. Um, I actually missed day 16 and ended up doing cards 16 and 17 on the same day so the next video will have 17, 18, 19 <clears throat> but you'll see me making the background of it on this one because what I wanted to do was play with my gel plate and my Dina Wakely Media acrylic paints, which are fairly new to me and I hadn't used them on a gel plate yet. So this is a four by six rectangular gel plate and I have it on a piece of plexiglass. Um, I got one big sheet of plexiglass and, uh, had, and I cut it up into different pieces for all my different gel plates because I have a lot of different sizes. And then that, that gives them a mount that, um, makes them easier to to have and hold and move. <clears throat> you can flip it over and make it into a stamp if you want to with these smaller ones. But I just generally use it to hold it. And then when I'm done, I <clears throat> put it back in its its little clamshell because I just think the clamshell protects them the very best. So I started out with some night colored paint and then I put one of the stencils from Strumpet Stencils again. You'll see me using these a lot on my ATCs because they're small, they're little tiny. Most of the ones that I order them order are the four by four size because I wasn't sure what size that was when I was ordering the stencils. I just like the designs and these tiny little stencils and a stencil girl also has four by fours, which you'll see me using some of those too because I joined the stencil club and one of the things you get in stencil club is a four by four. So. They're really perfect for tags and ATCs and small things. Um, putting in your journal, you know, they're easy to use because they're tiny. So that first one I uh, haven't used yet, so I don't know. But I just thought you people like to watch me gel print. I don't know. People love to watch me gel print. I don't get it. But since you do, I left all the gel printing in. And um, this background I'm I ended up using on day 17. So... Uh, that will be in the next video, but you will see you see me making the the card in the I don't know. I might cut this part out and take it over to the other video. I don't know. But anyway, I used um, Cheddar and Sedona on that background, and then I put uh, uh, Fuchsia, I think, Ruby and something, a dark pink on and put the stencil on. This is another one from Strumpet Stencils. This is a six by six heart, uh, atomical heart. I couldn't get the whole thing on the ATC because it's too big, but um, you can tell what it is on the ATC. And then of course I, 
I felt like I needed another color, so I added some of the blushing on there. It doesn't show up that much, but you can kind of see it. And then I lined the card back up and went over it again. See how that kind of lightens the areas a little bit? But blushing isn't a very opaque color, so it doesn't show up as much as I'd hoped. Then I decided that with all this delicious leftover paint, I was going to make another print, and I just made it on some uh, copy paper, you know, from your printer. It's a pickup print. It cleans up the plate, and uh, so you wait till it's dry, and then you put another coat of paint. This is unbleached titanium over it, and then uh, really, really burnish it, and it'll pick up all the paint not only what you just put on, but the, all the paint underneath because it's bonded together. And then you get an interesting print from that. So I'll use that on something. I don't know what. Something sometime. <laughs> so then my third one, I started out with Lapis Blue and uh, put the Nautilus stencil on there. Make sure that it's pressed down. And then I pulled off the excess paint from inside the stencil and around the stencil. Again, a four by four stencil, which makes a cool print on its own. Then I added lemon, lime, and sky colored paints over the top of the stencil without removing the stencil and blended all those together with my two inch soft rubber brayer. Pull off the pencil, the pencil, pull off the pencil, okay, <laughs> stencil, <laughs> and as I'm getting interesting prints as well as I'm cleaning up the stencils by turning them upside down and pressing them onto another sheet of cleanup paper, I'm getting some interesting stuff from that too, which will be used as collage stuff in the future. So uh, press that down really well and pick up the print. And then, of course, I still have a little bit of paint left, so I put some titanium white over that and pick that up as well. And then my uh, little gel plate is all clean once this one's up, and I move on to the next steps. So I made three backgrounds, and then I got a lot of different um, fun extra things to use in the future sometime. So then once this was dry, this was going to be my day 16, I decided to enhance. So when you use a stencil, even if you're gel printing or whatever, sometimes it just looks like a stencil, right? It just looks like a stencil. It's like, oh, she put a stencil on there. Woohoo. How is that art, right? <laughs> so I'm going to enhance it and uh, make it more mine by adding things that I found, find interesting to it. And this is a fun thing to do with stencils. Everybody can buy a stencil and use it, but how do you make it look as if it's art and not just a slapped on stencil? So I started out by using some of the scribble sticks to enhance the shading and colors on my print. I use that night colored scribble stick to kind of darken up the background and then also to draw back in the lines using my water tank brush that has a very fine tip. And then I wanted to use the white to, to add highlights, but it wasn't opaque enough. So I got out my Posca pen and just scribbled a little bit onto my under paper. And then I'm picking up that white acrylic with my water tank brush and adding highlights. And when I do this, it really starts to make the stencil turn into something like as if I had painted it. Even when you're using a stamp or a stencil or something that that we all can use as tools, that doesn't mean you have to stop there. You can add shadows, you can add highlights, you can, you know, use a pen over it and change the lines just to make it a little bit more yours. And that's a great thing to do if you don't feel confident enough to draw something yourself. So then I took this uh, Pixels, I think it's called Pixels stencil from the Crafters Workshop and just went over the top of my shell with a little bit of these tiny, tiny dots in a couple of the colors, bringing the background color back in, which was Lapis 
and then also some of that sky blue. If you've enjoyed this video, please remember to give it a thumbs up. Leave me a comment or question below. Subscribe, turn on your notifications if you really want to know when my videos come out. And hopefully that'll work out for you. And um, share this if you want to. Pin it on your Pinterest. Uh, put it on Facebook if you know somebody who might be interested in this. Because that really helps my channel and I appreciate it. That's it for me. Thanks. Bye-bye.